Hey guys, Jeff Teeley here, and today we're gonna make the perfect french fry. And we're gonna talk about the science of potatoes and french fries. Hi, I'm Dr. Ariel Johnson. I'm a food scientist. So my favorite way to cut french fries is batonnette. It's quarter inch to half inch by as long as the russet potato. The potatoes are gonna go into a nice big bowl of cold water. As you can see, the starches are already starting to leach out. And I'm gonna pat them completely dry in paper towels or towels. The potato is a tuber whose job it is to store water and energy for later use, mostly through a molecule called starch, which you may have heard of. Inside the raw, alive potato, starch is found bound up in the form of starch granules, layers upon layers and coils of starch molecules. They're basically glued together. They are not soluble in water, they're very hard, and they're not very tasty. As we cook the potato, applying heat through boiling or roasting or frying in this case, the starch granules start to soften up and take on water and kind of unravel a little bit in a process known as starch gelatinization. So the first initial fry should yield a colorless and flappy french fry. I'm gonna take a spider and lower them in there and let them cook for the first fry at 325 for about five minutes-ish. We're gonna get way more color on the second fry at 365 and that's where we get our crunchiness. What we've done here in this initial low temperature fry is added enough heat to the potato so that the starch granules go through a gelatinization process. So they have let water in, loosened up, and formed into a soft gel. Basically the delicious inside of a french fry. I want that oil to get back up to about 375, and when I put the fries in, they'll lower down to about 365, cook for about five to 10 minutes until they're golden brown and delicious. The first thing that we accomplished in the second high temperature fry is the dehydration of the surface of the fry. The removal of water through the high temperature oil allows the starches now on the surface to become crisp and give us the amazing crisp on the outside, tender in the middle texture that we look for in a good fry. You can see this happening as you're frying. When you put the fries into the oil, at first you'll see a lot of bubbling as that water boils away and goes away, you'll see a lot less bubbling towards the end. The second thing we accomplish from the second high temperature fry is the Maillard reaction. The Maillard reaction gives the outside of the french fry its great golden brown color, as well as its classic toasty french fry flavor. You might know the Maillard reaction from roasted coffee or baked bread or the amazing brown flavor of a well-grilled steak. It is the reaction between naturally occurring sugars and amino acids and ingredients brought to a high temperature. So these fries are ready to go, and what that means is they're golden brown on the outside, super crispy. This is pretty critical. Fresh out of the fryer, you wanna season your fries so that salt sticks to the oil, and just a little bit of that herbage and garlic, and give that a toss, and listen to that sound. That is a, it's a sound of beauty. So that is the science of a perfect french fry. Crispy on the outside, super, creamy and pillowy on the inside. I'm gonna do this all day, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna keep smashing. Yeah.